Good morning, first grade. How is everyone doing today? I hope uh, everyone's doing great. All right, we are jumping back into what do you do with a tail like this? And our one bite of pizza question today is, what does a deeper exploration of informational text features reveal in what do you do with a tail like this? So that's a pretty big sentence, right? So let's kind of break it down a little bit. Deeper exploration, we've talked about that before. That just means that it's, it's taking a closer look. And informational text features. So that was something that we talked about when we read the seahorse story. And we learned that there are often certain features, particularly in nonfiction books, that help to give us more information about the topic. We'll take a look at those in just a moment. And then the word reveal. So that is to kind of make itself shown or make itself known, to learn something new about something. So how can looking at the text features in this book help us learn more um, about these animals and their features? So that is our goal today. But first, let's review some of the text features that we took a look at with the seahorse, the seahorse text. Okay. So if you remember at the back of the book, in the back of the book, there was what was called an index. And if you remember, the index lists all the important topics that are included in that text, and they put them in alphabetical order, and they tell you what page number that topic can be found. Because if you remember, we talked about with nonfiction, you don't necessarily have to read it from fir the first page till the end. You don't have to read it cover to cover. If you just wanted to learn about the seahorse's eyes, you could look in the index, find the word eyes, and then just turn to page 20, which I think was the page that it was uh, listed for. So that's one feature that can help us when we are reading nonfiction. We also talked about text size, right? There were two different sizes of text in that book. The, the larger print, the larger text, kind of followed, al followed along with the story of just a seahorse and kind of what happens, what they do. And then the smaller print on each page was just giving us facts. So the two different texts, work together to give us kind of the story of a seahorse while still giving us important facts and information. The location of the text can help give us different information. It can draw our attention to uh, important facts or details. The text shape, remember when they were talking about the baby seahorse get flying away with the current or being swept away by the current and the text was written almost like a wave. We also saw bold print, which you're going to see again today. Uh, we also talked about text boxes, or some people will call them captions, where there is a picture and some text that tells about the picture. And we also talked about labeled pictures or labeled diagrams, uh, where you might see you know, an animal where instead of trying to explain the different parts of an animal, uh, an author can choose to include a label and have a drawing that points to the different parts like the ears or the nose or the head, um, which can be really helpful in showing us what an animal looks like, where their features are located, um, or about a different topic. Okay, so keep those text features in mind, and we're going to talk about a few more today, as well as keep an eye out for these uh, in this text. You maybe noticed some of these features uh, when we read this, this text. All right, so we are going to talk about three different animals. And, you know, this can be tricky because I'm asking you to think about not only the text features, but also what we are learning from those features about the animals. So let's take a look at a certain page in the book. Okay, so this says, what do you do with a nose like this? And I know that up here, this is the nose of the platypus because I've, I've read this before. And I know that using the illustration, I can learn and I know that a platypus has a flat, wide, 
gray colored nose. That's something that I can learn by looking at the picture. All right, and if I turn the page and I see the, the uh, this was a close up of the nose on this page, but when I turn to this page, it's zoomed out a little bit. That was the word I was trying to think of. It's zoomed out a little bit. And when I look at that, and when I look at this picture, I see the nose that I've learned about, but I also see that um, they have webbed feet, they have a brown body. And now let's read and see what the text tells us. If you're a platypus, you use your nose to dig in the mud. Hmm. Something else now I know, they use their nose for digging in the mud. All right, we're going to take a look at one more spot in the book and talk about a new text feature. So let me turn to that page and we'll take a quick look. All right, so we are back at the back of the book. And this is where I said we would come back to this part. And you, you can see that it gives some additional information about each of the animals that were featured in this book. What this part of the book is called is the back matter. So this is another text feature that some books will use where they will give, give you additional information at, at, at the end, and that's again called the back matter. And we see a couple of other features here. So if I look here, I see the word noses, and it's written in all capital letters, and it's bold. So this is what we would call a heading, because I can look here and see, oh, this is about ears. So people often use, or authors will use, headings to help tell about what that section of text is going to be about. So we can really quickly look and see, oh, this is going to tell me about the tails. This is going to tell me about the eyes. Here are the feet. And I can really quickly go and turn and kind of flip through. And if I'm specifically, if I'm specifically looking for information about the eyes of an animal, I can turn right to this page and then look for the animal that, that I'm interested in. So headings can be very helpful when you're flipping through and trying to find a specific part. So now let's see what else we can learn about the platypus. I also noticed that the word platypus is bold, right? That's another important feature when words are in bold. The author, what do you think the author's trying to do? Yeah, they're trying to call our attention to that word and say that, you know, this is an important word in the text. This whole paragraph here, this whole section is about the platypus. So again, just like with the headings, I can quickly go and look and see, oh, okay, this is about the platypus. Oh, this is about the hyena. All right, this part says the platypus, a very unusual animal, lives in streams, ponds, and rivers in Australia. It's a mammal, but it lays eggs. Its feet are webbed and the males have poisonous spurs on their back legs. Platypus poison probably wouldn't kill a person, but getting spurred is very painful and can be deadly for small animals. The platypus closes its eyes underwater and uses its sensitive bill to detect the faint electric pulses emitted by its prey. Then with its bill, it sifts through the mud for these small fish, frogs, and insects. Platypuses are usually about 20 inches long and weigh about five pounds. So I've learned a lot of additional information from the back matter, that's what this part is called, uh, about the platypus, such as the males have poisonous spurs on their back. They can use their bill to find prey with finding their, the electrical pulses from the prey. Uh, they use their bill to dig for mud using all of those different features, the illustration, the text, the heading, all has given me more information about the platypus. Okay, let's look at another animal. Okay, so on this page it says, what do you do with ears like these? And I'm gonna take a look here at the, that, at the hippopotamus rather. And this is a zoomed in illustration, but I can see that you know, they have kind of small gray ears and I can see hairs on them. So that's something I've learned from this illustration. Let's look at the next part. Okay, it says, if you're a hippopotamus, you close your ears when you're underwater. So I'm learning a bit more about the hippopotamus, 
the hippopotamus by looking at the illustration. I can see that, you know, they have a large gray body and, you know, pretty small ears compared to their body. But I'm also learning that they use their ears underwater because they can close their ears to keep water from getting into, you know, into their head, into their ears. Um, and I also noticed that the text here is written in such a way that it's almost following the back of the hippopotamus. It's not written in a straight line like sometimes we're used to. So this is another text feature that is just another way to present information and call attention to uh, facts. Now, let's take a quick look at the back matter to see what else we can learn about the hippopotamus. Okay, so now we are back to the back matter, which is again that part, the, the end of the book where some additional information is given. And I'm looking for the heading for ears so that I can find the hippopotamus. So here I see the word ears in capital letters and bold. And then if I quickly look through the animals, I see the animal names again are bolded. That bold text is another feature that calls our attention to certain things. And I see the hippopotamus here. So let's read and see what extra information we can learn about the hippopotamus. The hippopotamus is easily sunburned and spends much of its time underwater. These large animals, nine feet long, and easily weighing 3,000 pounds live in Africa and graze at night on grass and other plants around the lakes and rivers where they spend most of their time. Hippos close their ears and noses when they go underwater where they can stay as long as 30 minutes at a time. All right, so here we've learned some additional information about the hippopotamus by reading the back matter. We see that they, again, it talks about closing both their ears and their nose when they go underwater. We learn that they are easily sunburned, which is why they will, you know, hang out in the water to help from getting their skin sunburned. And here we've learned some extra information from reading the back matter. Okay, now it's your turn. We are together going to take a look at one more animal, the chimpanzee. And then I would like you to give Jamboard another try. We'll try out Jamboard um, and share a digital sticky note of something that we have learned about the chimpanzee by using the text features. So maybe something that you've learned from an illustration that you saw or something that you've heard from the back matter. So let's go ahead and read about the chimpanzee and then I can't wait to hear what interesting evidence, additional information you've learned about chimpanzees from the text features. All right, so it says, what do you do with feet like these? And I know that here is the chimpanzee's foot um, and it looks to me, you know, very similar to a human hand. So I don't know if that might be uh, something that we can learn from using this illustration. Let's go to the next page. All right, uh, so I see uh, an, a zoomed out illustration that is also giving me more information about how the chimpanzee uses their feet. And it says, if you're a chimpanzee, you feed yourself with your feet. All right, let's quickly check out the back matter and see what else we can learn. And then you can share something new you've learned from the text features. Okay, I've found the heading for feet. Again, it is in bold capital letters, so I can easily find it. And I see chimpanzees is also written in bold. It says, chimpanzees are humans closest animal relatives. These intelligent animals live in the forests of Africa and are typically five feet tall and 135 pounds. Like people, they have an opposable thumb. Unlike us, they also have an opposable big toe. This allows them to pick up and manipulate things with their feet. They eat fruit, leaves, insects, and the occasional small animal. All right, so I hope you learned something interesting about about the chimpanzee, but also that we have learned uh, new text features to look out for. And just to quickly review, uh, we learned about headings. 
where we will see either capital letters or bold or bigger text to help tell us about what a section will be about. And then we also learned about back matter. All right, so feel free to grab a copy of your book and look through, look back at the chimpanzee sections and share on the jam, share on the jam board uh, something new you've learned using the text features about chimpanzees. All right, and thank you for your kind attention. Let me know if you have any questions and I can't wait to see what you share.